when we were looking before at uh, interference of waves, that's in a sense the same thing as superposition of waves. So we're going to look at destructive and constructive um, in terms of superposition of waves. So let's just see here what we mean by that. Now superposition, this is actually just when we have two or more waves interacting with each other. Okay, so it's like what we saw before with interference. Now what we can do then with this, we can actually say something more interesting about it. Maybe I'll take away the parentheses here. So I have two or more waves interacting with each other. And what I mean by that then is that uh, these two waves can meet and we can have destructive or constructive interference as well. So we can have that as well. Okay, so we can have, maybe I'll say that, so we can have constructive interference. And what that means, that's when we have a maximum intensity of some kind, or we can have destructive interference, which is when we have a minimum. But we can also have anything in the middle. This is the thing I wanted to show you that these are the two extremes, but we can have anything in the middle as well. But I'll just show you the two extremes here. So the trick is to do this. So when you're looking at superposition of waves, the trick is just add up. This is how you can do it sort of manually here. Add up the height um, of both waves at every point. That's really how simple it is. That's all you have to do when you're actually sort of manually doing superposition of waves. So what do I mean by that? Let's do an example here of constructive interference here. So let's look at constructive. So here, what I'd like to do is uh, show you some example of some sort of wave here that's gonna come in. So maybe I'll draw one sort of blue here. This is sort of maybe in a string or something like that. And then coming towards it, maybe I'll draw a red one. Now I'm meaning to draw these the same size. I'm not sure if I made them look like that, but just so you can see, sort of there's a blue one and a red one. Let's say the blue one's going this way, and let's say the red one's going this way. See, these are two waves on a string about to collide. Now what happens is right as they meet, okay, so right as they're meeting here, so maybe I'll actually sort of try to draw that. What's going to happen then is, let's see here, so we have this, and we're gonna have a little space here. So right when they're on top of each other, you're going to have, basically I'll draw this, so they, we have a little sort of dotted line, I'll just draw this, so that's where the blue one, let's say, is, so the blue one's going that way. But we also would have, actually I shouldn't draw it there, because I won't have any space. In fact, I should probably drag this down a little bit. So what we also have, of course, is the red one that's also at the same place. So we also have the red one that's there. Okay, so we have the red one sort of going this way, and we have the blue one still going this way. So the waves don't actually change. In other words, the two waves will just go right through each other. So this blue one will go all the way to the right, the red one will go all the way to the left. They will come out unchanged. But what's interesting is right when they're superposed, right when the two waves are on top of each other. That's what it means to be superposed. So superposition of waves, we're looking at two waves right on top of each other like we've done here. Well, then we just add up the values. So let's say this height was equal to one, let's say. So we would add up at this at this point right here, we would add, well, actually let's do it over here. Over here we'd have zero plus zero equals zero. So that would be the total wave right here. What happens right here at this point? At this point, whatever this x value is here, the y value is one. And that's for the blue wave. And for the red wave, the y value is also one. So one plus one equals two. So that means the wave really will be up here. And I should probably draw this in black, let's say, because that'll be the sort of real thing. What about over here, right in the middle? It's the same thing, one plus one equals two. And over here, it's this. In other words, in this particular case, I've shown you a very nice, easy example. You're going to have this constructive interference. You have a maximum intensity. In fact, in this case, because of the way it's drawn and because they're the same things, you're going to have twice the intensity. That doesn't always happen like this. You just have to be careful and add them up yourself. Uh, and of course, after what happens? Well, afterwards, we have the red one. 
still traveling to the left and we still have our blue one still traveling to the right. So this is sort of like before, during and after. I don't know if I made that simple or if I made that look even more complicated here. Basically, this is what's going on. There's still the blue one basically just runs right through. The red one goes right through. But right when they meet, it's interesting. So this is an example of constructive interference. Now we can do the same sort of idea, but this time with destructive. So what if, for example, I have a blue wave. I'm just showing you the simplest examples I can think of here. And then let's say my red one, but let's say the red one is upside down. But we're gonna assume they're the same size and same length, same everything here. So here I have this one going this way, and here I have the blue one going this way. What happens when they actually meet? So right here, when they sort of, right when they meet, wherever that's going to be. What we're going to have, maybe I'll move this a little bit over. There we go. So what we're going to have then in that situation, we have the blue one, which is sort of, it's up here, a little dotted line. And the little red one, that one's actually down here. So again, I mean, at... At this point over here, zero plus zero equals zero, no problem there. But how about this? This is one, and let's say this is negative one, because it's down below. Well, one plus negative one is still zero. And just like over here, one plus negative one is still zero. And over here, one plus negative one is still zero, which means the actual thing will be a straight line just for that instant when these two waves are exactly over each other because they have the same shape, same size, same everything except for exactly the opposite orientation. They're going to meet and do exactly this. And then of course, afterwards, they're going to still pass through each other happily. So which means we're going to have, let's see here. Afterwards, we're gonna have this with our little red one traveling to the left. And we're going to have our little blue one traveling to the right, still happily along. So they've basically gone through each other. And the interesting thing is what happened when they actually met, when they're actually on top of each other. Now, like I said, this is the extreme examples of destructive and constructive. These are the sort of nicest examples you'll ever get. Now, what really happens, you get all sorts of crazy things. So what about this wave plus this wave? So what they've done here, they've just sort of added, assuming these are heights of sort of one here. So at this sort of X value here, let's see, this is this is a height of one plus a height of zero over here. Well, zero plus one gives you one. Just like at this exact X value right here, this is a height of one. And this one over here is a height of one. So one plus one equals two. That's why it goes twice the height. So this sort of shows you what it'll look like the instant this wave plus this wave are together. So this wave plus this wave, see how they're interacting? They're on top of each other. They're superposed. You know, if I could take this and actually lift it and put it on top of it there, you'd see it sort of here. And they're basically saying that this wave plus this wave gives you this. Same thing over here. Over here we have this wave plus this wave, and we see what happens here. And of course you can have all sorts of crazy things here, right? So you can have all sorts of weird shapes going on as it does this. So like I said, it's not always purely constructive or purely destructive. You can have all sorts of different situations with superposition of waves. Now I thought we could actually see this with this PHET animation, this wave on a string one. Now this one right here, of course, I can do what we were doing before. I was looking at this in another video, looking at what happens with uh, reflection at a boundary. So we have two fixed ends. So every time I have a wave, notice it comes back, it gets reflected and flipped. It's reflected and flipped. So every time I'm going to do these, that's going to happen. Okay, that's a bit boring. So what if, for example, I give it another wave coming in? Now look what happens to these. Now it looks like these waves are doing really weird things, but actually look carefully. We actually have this wave going through. Just follow where my mouse is actually going. So we actually have this a wave actually going through and down like this. But what happens is, as they meet, some weird stuff happens. So we have some weird things happening. And again, in order to really figure out what's going on, you'd have to sort of do this at every point to calculate what happens. It makes it look totally wacky. Uh, what if, for example, we did an oscillation instead? So something like this. Then we can see what happens as these waves are sort of going back and forth and meeting. It almost creates what we call standing waves. It looks pretty weird here. Or we could have done it actually with um, a pulse instead. So maybe if I want to restart here, maybe I see here's a pulse. 
So that will give me a nice pulse going back and forth like this. Okay, so it's going to flip, come back and go up, and go back and flip, so on. What if I give it another pulse? So boom, another pulse. So here it's a little bit clearer. So watch with my mouse here. This wave is still going to the right. Now it's going to the left. Now it's going to the right. And now it's going to the left. But what happens right as they meet, they seem like they flip. That's just because of how the superposition of the waves happened. Of course, I could do all sorts of crazy things, right? I can do a pulse, pulse, uh, maybe wait a little bit, maybe throw in another pulse. So now I've got three waves traveling along. It's hard to see them in dis uh, distinctly, but now I've really screwed up. I'll just add a bunch of pulses here and just see what happens. So all sorts of wacky stuff can happen. Calculating each of these, you just have to do it sort of instant by instance. You have to just go play and then just go the next step and the next step and the next step and sort of see where each of the waves actually is sitting. So for example, if I want to see this and do a pulse here and then wait and then do another pulse here, what I could do is actually calculate what's happening, for example, all right, now, for example, we have this wave and this wave. So that's why they're not interacting yet, because they're not running into each other. Now, this wave to the right is about to flip. So if we go next step, we'll see it actually sort of flip upside down. So there it goes. It's flipping upside down. And now it's about to start interacting with this one. So these two are going to occupy the same x value. So right about here, they start to interact with each other. So now they start interacting, and now you'd have to just calculate, you know, what this sort of wave would have been, and what this wave would have been, and what the height is. And then you realize, oh, right here, at this exact instant, did you see that? It looked like there was a place where the actual height was pretty much zero. So we had almost completely destructive interference at this instant. But of course, at the next one, it, they just keep traveling through each other. So this may look really weird. But you can just do it by taking your time and calculating the heights at each point. That's the key to doing these. So that's really how superposition of waves works.